good day. This is Professor Ken Top, and we'll be reviewing this final solution for role-based access control implementation using the Linux subsystem environment. It's a feature of virtualization now offered in uh, Windows 10 and Server 2016 and 2019 that extends uh, virtual resources and allows for Linux development. If you design an application that um, that uses uh, integration features, you basically have a chance to extend the utility and and uh, usefulness of your application. There are challenges when you try to implement Linux, and the purpose of this solution is to help you negotiate those distinctions. Primarily. Linux is an operating system that uh, uses the ext4 file system and inheritance is not a given default. So the things that we did in our previous solution in Windows, and, and let's take a, a quick look at that. Uh, if we look at <clears throat> just a quick uh, graphic, we created a series of file system objects and resources. We also mapped security groups and user accounts to those resources explicitly so that there was a one-to-one -one match. We had a, a directory called CSC underscore 410 for the university course and then on each campus we had a team directory STT users and STX underscore users with user accounts in each of the team security groups. We nested the team security groups inside the course security group. You'll see in a moment, that's just not possible in Linux. But uh, we you observed principles of inheritance to make sure that we had a granular provision of of uh, network-based resources that would allow, you know, custom flexible resources that would allow teams to work in a, in a variety of ways. You can extend this to Linux. Linux systems and Macs can uh, participate as members of an Active Directory Windows Server domain. <laughs> and it's, it's, uh, it goes without saying that, uh, that there are some key differences and as long as you as long as you work those key differences you'll have fewer problems the process is the same we create a series of resources file system objects we create groups to match we assign ownership and permissions when we're doing this in Linux though we don't have inheritance we're using a CLI a command line interface and it only works if you're located in the proper, proper directory level above the object that you want to change. So if you're, if you're interested in changing the permissions on 4.10, but you're inside the subdirectory 4.10, the command is going to look for a subdirectory within the CSC underscore 4.10 directory, and it won't find one, and it'll return an error. It says directory does not exist. Another difference uh, with commands is that, um, well, much like any operating system environment, uh, the sequence is important. So you can create a user account and assign that to a primary group with one command. We'll be doing that today. But it won't work if you did not create the group beforehand, which is why we're explicitly creating the security groups before we, uh, before we set up the user accounts. Unlike Windows, security groups, and we've already said this, security groups cannot be members of other security groups. And the workaround in Linux is to assign a new user a primary security group, and each user, in this case, like our previous solution, will be assigned a primary group for the site, stt users, and stx users, underscore, but then We'll also assign them a secondary group, which is CSC 410. So because inheritance doesn't work with Linux, we have to intentionally set permissions and uh, membership and ownership at each level. 
It doesn't just propagate. You can't just check a box. The other thing that's really important to call out is that only one assignment can be made for ownership in the Windows environment. Either a user account, which is what we did in the last solution, or a security group. But there's just one. There can only be one assignment for ownership for a file system object. In Linux, ownership is assigned to both a user and a security group. So that's, that's a difference we need to understand conceptually before we start. So in Windows, we just had one choice to make, and in Linux, we have to, have to distinctly and intentionally make two choices, what we're going to do for each uh, file system object or directory. Okay, so the other thing that's a real challenge with the command line environment is how picky it is about commands, and so for that reason, I have taken the liberty of extracting the command examples and copied them to a text file that we can use to copy and paste into the environment. And so if we just basically copy and then inside the terminal, we'll click into the terminal and then right click and paste, right click pastes it into the window. You'll see there are a lot fewer errors. And then with a simple um, up arrow keystroke, we can repeat the command and backspace and make changes as needed to repeat those commands. We're going to have to repeat the commands. You won't have to sit through all of that. We'll pause this video so that with the miracle of video editing, um, we're going to fast forward and we can skip that uh, stuff. But you'll have to do the same extra steps. You'll see a screenshot and you'll have to have the same result. We'll also show you some quick recovery methods if you make a mistake how to back out of something in case that's a problem. Um, and I think what we want to do now is get right to it. So one of the first things we need to do is to make sure that we start our environment properly and we're going to, you should have already installed uh, an instance of Windows Subsystem for Linux on your system and you should be able to right click it and select Run as Admin. In case you have a small screen to work with, you might change the properties of the terminal window that appears. You can change the font so it's larger or smaller. I'm going to keep it this size. And uh, one of the things we want to do that's different, when you set up Windows Subsystem for Linux, it said that you didn't have to set up user accounts or, or passwords or security groups that match. We're going to match them exactly with the Windows Active Directory security groups and user accounts and passwords so they are completely identical. That's because we want to use, uh, we want to take advantage of an integration uh, method called pass-through authentication. Um, that's just a, some would say that's just an access method, but when you're designing applications and you want them to run in multiple environments, it's important, it's important for security principles <coughs> and logins to track with each other. So that's the intent here, is to set the stage so that what we have in the Linux environment is identical to what it, it basically is an extension of what we have in the Active Directory domain environment. First order of business is to log in with super user privileges using the command sudo su and uh, you will have a password. Hopefully you set up the same one that you did. And you'll get a, a, a pound prompt. And this is our home directory, uh, slash home slash tchristian. Uh, if we look inside the directory, it should be empty. And it is empty. There's nothing really inside there except for some hidden things that are always there. Well, the first thing we're going to do is create our, our lead directory or our parent, our root directory. So I'm going to go ahead and copy this and then, and then uh, right click the mouse and then hit enter. And if I repeat the command with an up arrow to list it, now you'll see that I have created the directory csc underscore 410. And 
you can see that it's a directory because of the D right here. And the owner permissions are read, write, execute. The group permissions are read, execute. And the other permissions are read, execute. That's another difference between Linux and Windows. There's only three sets of security settings we can apply. Owner, group, and other. Other means everyone else on the planet. And this is, uh, yeah, anyway, that's that's important to understand. Uh, we're going to be using a command called change, mo change mod or change mode, chmod for some, and we're going to use numbers with that command to turn on or turn off the bits uh, to enable or disable these settings. In any case, you notice the individual uh, owner is root and the group owner is root, and that's not acceptable. We'll just have to go ahead and and um, change that, but we'll we'll follow down through the sequence of commands. The next command we're going to do is to repeat the same command to create the other directories, and so I'm going to do. Uh, I've made the directory for stt users. If I list this, what you're going to find here is a mistake. If you recall what we did in the previous solution, we wanted to do just like this case. And what we have here is the stt users directory sitting alongside the CSC 410. It needs to be inside there. So the command that I did wasn't in the right context. This may happen to you. And you, you're going to ask, how do I fix this? That's, that's easy. All you really have to do is use the rm command with a dash d and then uh, stt underscore users and if we look to see if it's still there, it's been cleanly plucked out of there. So in order to set the right stage, I'm going to have to enter the CSC 410 folder I just created. I'm going to issue the command CD for change directory, CSC underscore 410. Now you'll see the prompt changed. So my command prompt includes this new this new part that tells me where I am. Now I'm inside, and that's very helpful. I'm going to recreate that same command by hitting the up arrow key. And I'm going to repeat the command, but backspace with the right arrow key to this precise. Well, I'm going to use the right arrow key to that point and then hit the backspace once. And um, put in STX users, and now if I list my command, now I have two directories. Inside the CSC 410 folder, I have two directories. And we need to keep going. We're going to create the rest of the user folders you'll see in a moment after I pause this. So if you repeat the same thing, first thing is to change directories into one of these site directories and then create the user directories with the first initial last name all in lowercase. So here you see that I've uh, created three sets of directories and here they are after they've been created and they're nested inside the CSC underscore 410 STT slash un STT underscore users directory. So I'm going to repeat the same process for STX. Stand by. Oh, so one point of fact. To move back up, I'm just going to enter uh, CD and then dot dot, and that moves me up one level. And now I'm going to go back down into STX underscore users. Now I'm in the other directory. I'm going to repeat the commands for creating a user user directory. And here you see I've done this, completed this in STX users. I've created K Florence, 
Ella dot and our Matherin. So now I have the grandparent directory, the parent directories, and the child directories. So, so now I have the um, what I need in order to um, created the directories and file system objects. Now I need to create the groups. That's our next challenge. So I'm going to add a group and I'm going to do this from inside the CSC 410 directory. And then I'm going to repeat the groups. I can do that from this directory um, and create the other groups as well. I don't have to change the uh, where I'm located to do some of these commands. That's important to understand. So let me go ahead and copy this and then back up two levels. And then paste my command. Mm, that doesn't seem like the whole command. Oh yeah. And there we go. I didn't get an error message, so it must like that. Group add. And uh, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to hit the up arrow key and backspace over. Now this is an important thing to understand. This is our domain reference without the groovy.net backslash backslash in all caps. The group that would be created would only be a local group and that's not going to work. We need, we need groups that are associated with the domain and that's why we're using this convention. So you'll see that's also true for the accounts. So I'm going to put in stt users. I'm going to match the exact same name. And uh, here's a command to check to make sure the groups have been created properly. Um, I think it's groups. be more groups slash Etsy groups. There it is. Nope. Let's try group. There it is. So if I drop to the end, you see the groups have been created. And those are domain security groups. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and clear that screen. And we'll continue. Now that we've created the groups, we can reference them in a command that creates the user accounts. I'm going to go ahead and paste, uh, paste my Paste my information into here. There we go. And you'll see that, uh, once again, the domain reference is here. So that's an extension of the domain user account, K Florence. I'm going to use the dash little g. And then here's the primary group it's going to be assigned to. Since I've created this, there should be no issue. I'm going to repeat the same command, substituting the users here for each one of the STX users, and then repeat it again with STT users and the St. Thomas students. I'll pause this and let me do this. So you can see that we've had a successful run of six user accounts that were added, each to their respective security groups in the domain, groovy.net domain. And now we're going to modify 
each of these usernames with a single command that we repeat six times, putting them in a secondary group, CSC410. So, copy this and paste. This will be the first one. And you see that one was successful. I'll do the other six in just a moment. Here you see we have created, created the association for the secondary security group. So they're in a primary, now they're in a secondary. And this is different. This command is different because we're doing it for each of the users, even though they're in a separate primary group. So they all have a common secondary group. That's going to allow us the workaround we need. Now we're going to confirm that we actually have this. We've accomplished this by issuing a command to review the groups for each user. We want to make sure that it shows what group assignments exist for this account. If we've made a mistake creating the account, assigning the primary group or the secondary group, it's going to show up right here. So and I guess we'll try it again. Or we'll just type it in, groups, ruby.net, backslash, backslash, K Florence, and repeat it. Yep. roll please. You see here the groovy.net K Florence. Notice the change in syntax, right? We've lost the second backspace and that's how it renders. The command renders the assignment without the double backspace so when it comes out in the wash it's actually just one backspace. That's for POSIX compliance. groovy.net K Florence is associated with STX users primarily and secondarily with CSC 410. We're going to repeat this command for all the other users. Stand by. And here you see the command for groups here from Ella Dot. She's in St. Croix and in CSC 410. The same for Ray Matherin, right? Uh, STX users and CSC 410. When we get to Kenny Glybird, he's in STT users, but still in the same secondary group. So that common association will help us do what we need for the common access to the course folder. Same is true for J.R. Smith. Here we are and S. Garcia. So we have the correct assignments. And at this point, we're ready to start working with ownership and permissions. It's a good idea to take screenshots at a couple of points along the way. You're going to want to paste those into your submission. Uh, there is just one set of screenshots at the very end that you can opt to uh, use for your final submission. And it pretty much proves that you've done everything correctly or the screen wouldn't render like it's uh, supposed to. Uh, there's, there's three final uh, screenshots, but it's good to keep track of your progress along the way in case you're interrupted as you keep working. We've had several disruptions and service disconnects along the way here, so that keeps me straight. All right, our next order of business then is to change ownership and from here we have to worry about where we're placed again 
So placement is important, meaning for the groovy.net um, assignments, you want to be inside the 410 directory. And I think because of the way the path is stated here, um, we should be OK. We're going to assign this to the STX users directory. And we're basically making K Florence the individual owner and STX users, the domain security group, the security group. Um, so once again, what am I talking about? Well, let me copy the command so you can see. And then we'll repeat. And we may have to change location. So initially, we're, we're sitting in here. Um, Let's see. We're going to that's not the command we want. Uh, that's the command we want. We're actually going to want to modify this because we're sitting on the root. This means we're going to be able to change the directory ownership of CSC 410. And I'm going to put K Florence in charge of that. Uh, she's going to be the individual owner. And actually, I think I'll put myself here, T Christian. And then I'll put CSC 410 is the group assignment for the CSC 410 users. This is the command that would be used to change STX users. So, so what am I saying? Well, let's jump around a little bit. I'm going to enter CSC 410. And if I look, I have the STX users directory here. So now I can enter the command that I had in there before, um, which I never executed, and that's why it's not in my command history. So I'm going to right click and paste. So for the STX users, I can execute this command here because I'm sitting in CSC 410. And it likes the command. Now let's repeat the command. And I'm going to change this for STT users. And I'm going to put K Liburd as the owner. Now let's use S Garcia. He's last in the roster, but that doesn't mean he should be last all the time. He's probably saying, yeah, that's right because he's listening to this. So we're going to change ownership of the STT users folder. But you'll notice I've missed something here. I need to make sure this is also STT. I hit Enter. And now, if I list these directories, up here you saw that when they were created by root, root was the individual owner and the group assignment. But now, S. Garcia is the owner for STT users. And K. Florence is the owner for STX users. And their respective groups are also listed. This is, the, this is another workaround that allows us to get granular for role-based access control using Linux in an Active Directory environment. So at this point, we're going to back up and do the same for our, um, I'll use Jair Smith, J. Smith, for the owner for the CSC, and I'll change this command. So I'm going to back up here one level, and I will issue the same command, but modify it so that it's 
csc underscore 410. That's the directory we want to change. And we want to change the group to csc underscore 410. See, that's why naming the security principles in the same like fashion as the file system objects, it helps you keep things straight. Instead of S. Garcia here, we're going to put J. Smith. I'm going to hit enter. I'd like the command. If I look, I have created the change so that the CSC 410 group is assigned as an owner to the CSC 410 directory. And J. Smith is the owner, the individual owner. I'm going to go ahead and make these changes for uh, each of the user directories. Um, and we'll pause the video at this point. You'll see that we're going to list their individual directory here the team they belong to there, and their name for their account here, so that they're owners of their own folders, okay? And here we go. I'm gonna pause this, and but before I get started, I want you to know I have to change location. I have to get inside each of the team directories to do this. Now here you can see the first example. We have J. Smith, the directory, sitting inside the STT users. We want to change this from CSC 410 because we don't want the Crucian students to have secondary access to a St. Thomas students directory. So I'm going to remove this and put STT users. And, and Jay Smith is already listed. This is correct. Liked the example. I'm going to repeat this for all the other. Um, let's let's go ahead and just look and see if this did what it was supposed to do. And it did. For the J Smith directory, you see we've changed J Smith to the owner and STT users to the secondary. And when we change the group permissions, you'll see how, how that works. The other two have to be done yet. I'm gonna go ahead and pause this while we do the others. We have our finished result. K Liberd for K Liberd and S Garcia for S Garcia. STT users stand by for STX now. You see here, we have done the same for our um, for our STX users, the command issued was different. It used STX. K Florence is in charge of K Florence. L Ladot in charge of L Ladot. Armathrin in charge of Armathrin. What we want to do now is modify the permissions. We want the owner to have read, write, and execute privileges. We want the groups to have read and execute privileges, but we do not want everyone else in the world to have read and execute privileges. We don't want everyone else in everyone's Kool-Aid. So we need to issue a single command, and we can do this within each uh, of the directories here. I'm going to start in STX users because I'm already here. And I'm going to say change mod 750 STX users. That's the command I would use on the STX users directory. So I'm going to go ahead and copy this. And for now, I'm just going to paste it in here. Oh, no. Okay, I'm just going to type this out. 
Javon. And I'm going to apply the command to a user directory first. 750. Zero is going to take out all privileges. The zero here is going to take out all privileges for the other group. Seven and seven is going to give the owner all rights, read, write, and execute. The group five signifies the third bit and the first bit, actually this bit and this bit down here. So I'm going to put seven five zero here and then K Florence that's the directory I want to change. I'm going to repeat the command for L a dot. And for R Matherin. I have to do this for every directory I've created. User directories, team directories, and course directory. Once I'm finished, I'll have a very robust result. So now, if I look at the end result, now you see the other groups have permissions removed, where before the world could look into this Kool-Aid. The world could get into Ray's Kool-Aid, Kanisha's Kool-Aid, Lakeisha's Kool-Aid. We're going to finish making these changes, and you'll see the directory listing also shows the proper ownership. It's you need at least one of the users' uh, directories for your snapshot. So I'm going to I'm going to basically capture this for my screenshot, and. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and press print screen. And then from here, I should be able to go into paint. If I choose a new one, I have my screenshot, and I'll call this. user come on waiting for the screen to respond a little bit of hesitation there that's one of them user directory set for our back I'm going to go ahead and finish making the other changes I don't have to have snapshots of every single user directory, but I do need the team folders and the course folder up here. So I'm going to hit the pause button, go ahead and finish making my change mode commands, and then get other screenshots. We'll be right back. Here you see I've completed the changes for J. Smith, K. Labrador, and Garcia. These are blanked out. Stand by for the others. I'm going to have to navigate up from STT into the 410 directory in order to make the changes on STT, STT users and STX users. And someone asked, why don't I have the groovy.net backslash backslash right here? That's because the directory itself is called STT underscore users. The security group has the groovy.net designation in front. If I hit this, I'm in the 410 level. I should get a uh, good result. And um, uh, looks like we have some screen hesitation. Stand by. So here you see we have the site directory, oops, site directory permissions right here are set properly. 
the two campus directories, STT users and STX users, have changed other settings here with the commands that we issued up here, right here. So um, this is a screenshot I want to keep. I'm going to go ahead and press print screen and then go over to, I'll say, save as, instead of user directory, I'll say, campus directory set for RBAC and then we'll finish the job with CSC 410. We'll do that right here. I'm going to navigate up one level and now I have HMOD 750 CSC underscore 410 since I'm in the home directory. If I, if I look at the end result, I have removed the other permissions. You see the proper owner, group owner permissions for this folder. This is my last screenshot I'm going to save this as course directory set for our back paste these three into a word document and submit and I'm done So what we've done is created the same resources with a different method based on the differences in Linux using the subsystem environment to ensure that we have role-based access control that's consistent and security principles that are consistent regardless of the operating system environment where the application is running. This concludes our demonstration for Linux RBAC implementation. Uh, as always, I'm available for assistance as needed. Thank you, and have a good day.